Oh. Hello, everybody, also from Zoom. Uh, here's Prague. This is the Prague seminar, mathematical physics seminar. Our speaker is Pierzy Narodny uh, from our uh, Charles University, and he is going to talk about uh, the bridge between differential cohomology data for higher connections and the sections of generalized ATIA's short exit sequence. Yeah. Thank you very much for introducing and uh, uh, introducing me uh, together with the title of my talk, uh, which uh, could have seen uh, as, as, uh, so long as uh, it uh, might took all the time of uh, my lecture, but uh, it uh, didn't happen. And so I would like to say that I'm very happy I have an uh, opportunity to uh, give a talk uh, on our uh, home seminar. And uh, uh, this is this is a uh, uh, talk uh, which can be viewed as uh, some kind of continuation of uh, what uh, I uh, gave uh, two, two weeks ago at the algebra department. But uh, the continuation will be, uh, uh, it's not, it's not uh, uh, it seems to be uh, in the strict sense, but uh, it uh, could be when we test it. Michael's has uh, some book. This uh, this is uh, definitely another another chapter of this book. And uh, uh, speaking uh, about uh, talks on this on this project, uh, I uh, gave a series of, of uh, mini talks uh, two and a half a year year ago approximately uh, when I talked about. Uh, uh, one jet construction as defined uh, by, by uh, Pavel Shevera in, in his uh, uh, article. And uh, in this spirit, this can be viewed, this talk can be viewed as, uh, as a predecessor of uh, this uh, chapter in a parenthesis, because uh, uh, I'm gonna have to say something uh, uh, something uh, more fundamental and uh, something uh, from which we can we can build other other uh, other work so uh, firstly um, i would uh, very briefly recap uh, some very classical piece of uh, differential geometry Uh, can you write slightly larger? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Uh, classical theory of connections on principle. It is Thank better you. when I write uh, with capitals. Okay, hey, it's better. Thank you. So, uh, in, in a more, more general uh, setting than on principle bundles, we can. Uh, uh, we can uh, form one kind of uh, uh, interesting uh, short exact sequence of uh, vector bundles, uh, which uh, uh, consists of the uh, following data. Uh, let us have uh, some, uh, some vibration. Then we can, we can in general, uh, take the, take the uh, Total space of this of this uh, e and uh, uh, take some kind of uh, uh, push forward of this mapping uh, to e n and then take a kernel of 
this method, right? And uh, this uh, general construction would lead us to uh, this exact sequence. And from the very construction, we, we can see uh, this composition is uh, really this zero morphism. And uh, moreover, uh, this uh, sub vector, vector sum bundle is, is uh, vertical. And uh, the theory, rational connection says that once uh, we have we have a decomposition of a, a tangent space of this uh, total space E uh, into the vertical and horizontal part, we automatically obtain a generalized uh, or, or Ereshman connection. But the story, so once uh, we have uh, this uh, splitting morphism, we can we can decompose this uh, into into this. And this one. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case of uh, principal bundles, the whole sequence is uh, G equivariant, right? So we can we, we can uh, quotient all the mappings to obtain uh, to obtain G equivariant splitting. Which uh, I'm going to, to write down right now. So once uh, we have a principal bundle, meaning uh, uh, vibration together with uh, principal action G, we can form something very similar to this one, but uh, in, in the uh, sense. Uh, uh, more suitable for principal bundles would give us this sequence. Oh, sorry. This is not entirely the truth because this is over E. We need to pull back this along this file. Yeah. Maybe the notation might differ from the literature. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, this this is the result, and uh, we can see uh, this uh, splitting has a uh, similar fashion as this one, and uh, <coughs> produces produces. Uh, in the data for uh, horizontal distribution on uh, this the algebraic and uh, from the from the uh, from the terminology of Atia, this sequence uh, is called uh, Atia sequence of short exact sequence of three algebraics and uh, this uh, middle part, this middle element, is uh, then called uh, Atia the algebra. So, okay. so this is this is a very brief uh, recap how to build a, uh, how to build. Uh, uh, Short exact sequence of three algebraids uh, together with a splitting morphism, which in turn produces a horizontal distribution, which is equivariant and uh, encodes the Ereshman connection on the principal one. So uh, we would like to we would like to generalize this uh, sequence in order to to uh, have a um, stronger weapon encoding. Uh, Higher data or, or data for a higher cohomology. So uh, at this point, I will skip skip uh, this uh, classical story and uh, take a look on quite different uh, 
quite different uh, uh, part of mass. So can I just clarify? So the, the algebra has a uh, which phase? Uh, this algebra is over uh, over n. Yes. Okay. And, and th th those morphisms are, are algebraic morphisms, and uh, this sigma has to be has to be splitting in the sense that uh, uh, this identity sigma is not usually algebraic morphism. It's only two uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, honestly, I will consider only flat connections. In this okay. And what is the, the bracket on the kernel? Uh, yeah. Uh, so you just, uh, you, okay, so you send the vector field yes. on the TP, then you take the, well, from P, you take the E bracket. And uh, you yeah, and it induces uh, the, the bracket on this one. So this equipped with a, a structure of this uh, forms the forms the <laughs> sequence of the algebra. Um, okay. Um, the second uh, piece of data we need uh, to be aware of is uh, the honest category where we would like to uh, formulate uh, cohomology theory. So Designated as the universe where we live. And uh, I don't want to let uh, anybody down by saying that uh, this is uh, uh, the infinity category. Of uh, um, something what I would call infinity one stack over one side of two manifolds. Um, I said that I owe you the definition of, of uh, this beast uh, from uh, my talk in in Sereni, so I'll try to uh, take off this. Uh, so the infinity Oh, is it really feasible? <laughs> Switched from capitals. Uh, well, it's a little small. Yeah. If you can, yeah. okay. it, uh, and, and we and we don't see anything that's to the left of the def, like def. Uh -huh. And that's nothing. Okay. No, that, I mean that, that that is that is fine, but like to the left, like we I don't see Nari, for instance. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, I. Uh, I, I see death, death that I see, but like what is to the left of it, I don't see. Okay, <laughs> okay I see. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> so, um, the first uh, definition we need is the uh, infinity category of. Uh, Uh, freshies, let's say uh, infinity one freshies. Okay. Uh, over this. And uh, I will define it 
as uh, so how do you know it this way and defined um, uh, some internal home uh, in uh, It's with, with uh, values and something which uh, I designate uh, as uh, this uh, infinity category. And uh, this infinity category is uh, something what uh, I afraid don't have enough time for, for defining, but uh, this uh, you can view as some kind of nerve applied on time complexes and age in Khan complexes. Khan complex is a special kind of simple short set. And uh, we can uh, we can enrich uh, this uh, subcategory of uh, simple short sets in this in this uh, uh, modulo category. So we obtain some kind of uh, simple short category. And the coherent nerve applied to this simple short category really produces a uh, 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 simple short set. And uh, yes, simple short set. And internal home between these two simple short sets is again simple short set, what I will call simple short pressures on, on this, on this uh, category. This is a uh, very, very well known category of first smooth manifolds. And uh, what uh, I do is a uh, very uh, natural operation, take an ordinary nerve of one category, uh, which produces uh, infinity category, but uh, very well behaved inf infinity category, and uh, compute all the simplicial mappings, uh, or you can, you can uh, view this uh, as infinity functors from this to this one, from this uh, Simple short set to this simple short set. And uh, it turns out that this internal home is again, um, is again, uh, simple short, uh, sorry, uh, can simple short set. And uh, its, its objects are these functors, these infinity functors. Uh, morphisms are just. Uh, uh, natural transformations between these uh, functors and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Yuji, I don't know the definition of a nerve. Can you give it? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can. This this is uh, doable in the frame of my time. So okay. uh, I can I can. Uh, take uh, objects of this one category as uh, first degree or, or zero degree of a simple short set. Uh, first, uh, for first degree of this simple short set are, are all uh, morphisms of this category. Okay. The second degree uh, consists of uh, all composable morphisms mm -hmm. from uh, from A to C with a stop at B. So. Let's mm -hmm. let's right and and the and uh, in this spirit up to infinity. So we can we, we can uh, define this way uh, all uh, degrees of this uh, uh, simple short set, and uh, then then. Uh, demand to have uh, uh, degeneracies and faces as operations taking uh, from this uh, composition, for instance, this this one, right? Where this and this we can uniquely compose into this morphism and obtain element in the degree uh, one one lower. Right, so so this is this is uh, 
for instance, so uh, maybe, maybe it would help to draw some brackets uh, because the arrow in the middle is a different kind of arrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Is this the uh, abuse of notation? Yeah. Um, so, so, so is it satisfactory? Yes, or thank you. This is very brief explanation. But... And okay, and so, so your simple sheet sets don't have to actually be sets? Mm, not really. This is, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll refer to yeah, what was the simplicial set? No, I'm just asking because set of all smooth manifolds, they form set or No, uh, one category, or better, better say one side, but uh, I don't want to go into detail what, what is this, because it's not uh, uh, necessary to have in mind uh, what is this gadget uh, when defining uh, freshness. This is uh, uh, necessary only when we uh, would like to, to say uh, which kind of uh, fresh sheaf uh, satisfy descent condition. And the descent condition on fresh sheaves is encoded in this, in this data, uh, is encoded due to this data. You can, you, you can furnish your uh, one category of smooth manifolds by, by, uh, by a topology. And uh, with respect to this topology, your fresh sheaf uh, is required uh, to, to uh, satisfy some, some uh, decent condition, which in turn uh, define the subcategory, full subcategory of this infinity category. And this I will call smooth, or oh, sorry, sorry, uh, steps. So uh, let, let me assume uh, some uh, category or full subcategory, infinity subcategory of uh, this one uh, called uh, category of uh, uh, infinity one steps over this is the category of those uh, uh, functors together with their natural transformations and stuff like that, uh, satisfying some let's say uh, following from from this this uh, uh, data. I will not uh, speak about this this uh, for, for a longer time because it's not actually it's not uh, what what uh, what's the main point of my talk. Um, well, I just a small question to get out of what is an infinity one category? What do you mean that? Mm -hmm. uh, infinity one category is a, a special kind of uh, simplicial set mm -hmm. uh, satisfying uh, uh, can lifting property. Can lifting property goes uh, from the uh, uh, more general uh, requirement on object to be to be a fibrant object uh, and once you have you have a, a, let's say qlm model structure in a simplicial set and say okay i would like to single out the objects which uh, are fibrant with respect to this model structure you you obtain can simplicial sets and the and the the lifting property oh, yeah, yeah. The lifting property, which uh, we require, is uh, this lifting property. Whenever we have uh, this uh, commutative square, there exists the lifting uh, from from the standard simplex to to, uh, to this object. And whenever it's true, I will call this simplicial set. As a common simple set. Mm -hmm. okay. Lambdas are horns, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lambdas are special kind of. Uh, uh, so some kind of polymer uh, obtained from this standard simplicis. 
And this standard template is uh, representable. Nothing about home. Where uh, I haven't said what was the simplicial set actually, but uh, uh, any simplicial set is functor from from this category uh, two sets, and uh, we can take uh, in this category some uh, the sequence of numbers, what's the object of this category, and say okay the image of this functor inside inside the uh, uh, simplicial sets is, is this by the Yomeda embedding. And some kind of full limit on this, on this uh, object is uh, uh, simply equivalent to the whole. One more pictorial way you can view this as uh, really the horn without uh, one, uh, one face and the interior. And if, if you would like to, to uh, state it more, in more geometric way, whenever, whenever we have two L's, we can find this L as to, as to have a possibility to, 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 to fill in this triangle. What is nothing but the property of, of categories. We can compose these two morphisms to, to change this one. And once we have a uh, we have the unique lifting property, it says we have only one morphism and the filling as to as to result with the commuting triangle. So this is this is uh, the shadow of uh, uh, these ordinary nerves or, or nerves of applied to ordinary categories. Okay. Uh, yeah. Two weeks ago, I motivated uh, uh, working in this category uh, by the statement uh, that uh, it's uh, infinity topos, but uh, we can present it uh, with uh, one topos with a model structure and. Uh, I haven't mentioned uh, how it is possible to uh, run from infinity <coughs> category to, to one category with a modal structure, and uh, what the what the uh, safe uh, statement or, or statement uh, which might uh, satisfy us that uh, uh, we, we really uh, work. Uh, in some uh, infinity category setting, uh, state state the following. I will call it vice observation. So We really do well without uh, this infinity categorical language because uh, we have we, we have this observation. So Once we define uh, ordinary category, I mean one category of simplicial pressures over simplicial, uh, sorry, uh, over smooth manifolds together with some kind of extra structure, what's called uh, model structure, specifically speaking, projective model structure, or you can say global projective model structure. You can expand this uh, 
uh, this uh, structure into some simplest category such that five rank and five rank subcategory of this is nothing but this uh, infinity category of, of stacks. Uh, there is a quite uh, uh, big portion of work to prove this. Uh, yeah, the smart presentation is a fun category on this. Ashes on simple elements. Smooth manifolds. You can you can mm. uh, read it as, as like this because uh, uh, ordinary uh, category of small categories uh, has a closed monoidal structure. You can take internal home between objects of this category because this is this is category this is category functors from this category to this category uh, in general uh, forms just a set but we can equate this set uh, with uh, uh, morphisms because we have natural transformation between these two these two uh, these two sets so this is uh, internal law you can uh, write it as fun or home with underline and uh, interesting thing about this is that you can view this equally well as uh, press sheets, ordinary press sheets or manifolds uh, with values in simplicial sets. This comes from the symmetrical property of tensor product in a category of local small categories. So if, if you, you can uh, uh, find in the literature this notation and uh, you can choose your favorite interpretation. And uh, and the observation uh, says that uh, this infinity category, in fact, um, is uh, equivalent in the sense of the simplicial sets uh, to some kind of uh, extension of this. Into uh, category enriched in simplicial sets and take some subcategory what's uh, denoted in the literature by this circle above. And uh, this uh, ordinary one category can be equipped uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, um, enrichment. Because we have internal home not only in simplicial sets, but on the simplicial pressures on any any side. So we can make this being a, a simplicial category what's nothing else than category enriched in simplicial sets, and say, okay, but this is too large category. We are interested in something smaller and these two then under some kind of correction because this is this is a category whose homes are simplicial sets and this category is simplicial category exactly in this sense but between these two categories we have for dictionary. We have dictionary uh, due to Lurie's construction of homotopy coherent map, which says that we can go from this to this one 
by uh, taking a coherent nerve, what is a generalization of, of uh, this ordinary one, one nerve or nerve of one category. Because as you can see, this can be viewed as also as a simplicial category, but with a constant uh, simplicial uh, sets. In each degree, you have such set, which is constant in each degree, and it represents a set. Because sets, as you can anticipate, really uh, create the subcategory of simplicial sets. So also this is uh, incarnation of a coherent nerve, of course, but uh, uh, very childish. Okay, so I completed uh, what uh, I haven't said uh, uh, in different seminar, but, but uh, I promise this is this is uh, uh, the end, this is the end of uh, higher category of uh, nonsenses. And uh, I'll try to to uh, take things on the ground and uh, say something about Atia in this in this category. Oh, uh, sorry, in this category. Okay. Uh, the third part. It's uh, sketchy uh, introduction to uh, yeah, brain differential cohomology theory. I'm not expert in this area, so I'll just uh, uh, state the, the definition and the relation to what we are interested in. Uh, absolutely uh, essential to Almanac for people who like to study this uh, higher differential homology theories. Uh, so it's, a, it's a group project by by Schreiber. Uh, it's currently above uh, 1,000 pages, so I think this is uh, just uh, not even fully faithful embedding to this literature. And uh, yeah, uh, what's, the, what's the cohomology theory in this sense? Uh, Firstly, we will not be interested in uh, the whole cohomology theory. We will be interested only in uh, cohomology theory with uh, some special choice of uh, coefficient. And uh, this acting is uh, quite uh, uh, purposeful because uh, we have to, we want to model uh, nothing else than, uh, than connections. So first definition. Let G be a group object or say infinity group, but all the infinity groups are presented by simplicial groups. B. 
this category. Uh, then we can form uh, this space because of uh, this factor sends uh, any group object in this category to subcategory of, uh, of this one. This is this is a category of pointed uh, connected objects. But uh, it doesn't matter. I will uh, stick to the one category of uh, jargon and say or, or define uh, this even in the one category setting. So I'll say that uh, this VG is some kind of uh, simulation of fresh sheaves on uh, smooth manifolds defined on objects this way. Smooth functions, the uh, NER G in the K degree. And you can recognize from uh, this property uh, the property establishing the local data for principal bundle because uh, uh, these functions because of uh, this uh, functor is a uh, sheaf uh, satisfies uh, uh, some gluing conditions and uh, in the in the one category of setting when this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, ordinary ordinary group it produces uh, a cosyco condition as you as you know cosyco condition uh, enabling us to reconstruct principal bundle out of this data but principal bundle on on you on you but we are interested uh, i haven't said what's, what's new uh, so uh, U is a um, spaces. Oh, yeah. uh, the definition is it's uh, working. Uh, on the subset of smooth manifold or subcategory of smooth manifolds, uh, where uh, those n-dimensional Cartesian spaces uh, embeds into into this, and uh, due to sheet condition, we can we can uh, define this action on arbitrary x uh, belonging to this one because we can. We, we can take a co-limit of uh, some uh, resolution, right? We can make a check resolution of this, producing a uh, uh, simplicial set, right? And uh, uh, apply this this uh, BG together with the uh, property that this is the legal homotopy equivalent. So this is uh, why we can we can define it like this. And uh, what is even more important for for differential homology is. Uh, differential refinement of, of this piece it is it is a flat uh, coefficient in the sense co uh, differential homology theory producing uh, connections which has this as a coefficient object produces only flat connections so this is the reason why some authors uh, call it uh, flat 
flat uh, object, classifying object. Uh, yeah, I need this actually. Um, you can define it as well on uh, Cartesian spaces as uh, uh, kind of flat differential forms with uh, values in a uh, infinity algebra of this one, of this, of this G, right? And the flatness uh, means that uh, um, associated uh, L infinity algebra to morphisms between uh, between this and the uh, Schemarine of this is nothing uh, but uh, but uh, uh, more Cartan elements of of uh, this tensor product. And we know that this is uh, truly uh, this is this is truly uh, L infinity algebra, and you can take uh, only more Cartan elements to get flat flat uh, connection over uh, some Cartesian space. And uh, again, by the Bluing property, we can we can reconstruct the action on any uh, smooth manifold. Okay, is there any question to, to this part? So what would you, would you just know there's just three different presentations of the same object, it's flat and a flat point. Uh, so they have more, more elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this and is, this is another, another presentation for this uh, algebraic morphisms. Yeah, okay. yeah and Yeah, it's just a definition. So definition it, uh, it's, it's a statement. I think this is the statement. And more Cartan elements in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, algebra are called uh, flat flat connections. So nothing, nothing else in this. Um, okay. And finally, the definition of uh, uh, of uh, differential homology theory with values in this. So the definition. <clears throat> First, uh, differential uh, homology group of uh, space X with values uh, in. Oh, okay. The values uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, uh, coefficient defined as a uh, derived home space uh, between these two objects. But the upshot of this and upshot of uh, presenting uh, higher categories uh, inside one categories or, or by means of uh, model one categories is that this is nothing else than uh, really homotopy category obtained by uh, construction of uh, homotopy category in uh, in ordinary one model category. I hope uh, it it was, was clear. Uh, the point I'm at aiming to is that we can we can uh, form two kinds of homotopy categories. We can define uh, higher homo uh, cohomology, the differential cohomology, as a uh, derived home space. Computed uh, in in uh, to stress the difference. 
would you in the in a, a this category and the, the claim is is nothing else than a very let's say a ordinary home space in homotopy category of of, of this one. So this is uh, why we can compute differential homology even in a, in a higher category of setting by means of uh, uh, moral categories. Okay. Um, uh, really nice thing about uh, uh, this approach is that we can we can reformulate briefly uh, this cohomologic cohomological theory because and uh, this is encapsulated in somewhere here in one very useful word and it's a uh, cohesive because we have in, in this category in this category we have a, a natural notion of cohesion was the adjunction between this b and uh, some shape functor which moreover uh, represents in the category of uh, infinity stacks nothing but uh, fundamental infinity group point. So we have the relation, there is no ATR sequence yet, <laughs> but we have, we have the relation between uh, cohomology theory in the sense of uh, this uh, flat object and the cohomology theory in the sense of uh, uh, parallel transport uh, categories, because this in, in our category is exactly what the, what the another very very uh, non-trivial finding in 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 category of uh, spaces in category of infinity stacks over smooth manifold. This is this is fundamental groupoid. What's a very well uh, Treated object, object, very handy object for us because we have uh, proper intuition. What is this? We have we have relation between this and the base. We we know how to how to uh, compute uh, parallel uh, transport functors, and uh, uh, th 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 there is uh, another. Observation that these two cohomology theories do have the common invariants, and uh, as you as you might uh, expect, this invariant of uh, uh, cohomology theory given by this flat and uh, this shape uh, functors are uh, are principal bundles, are underlying principal bundles, and. Uh, uh, true enough, uh, we can we can uh, take this uh, cohomology theory as a refinement of a bundle theory exactly in this sense. There is uh, there is uh, for for any uh, principal bundle encoded in this morphism, we can find with Oh, sorry. We can find a morphism from X to this beast. And uh, in, in, in the very this uh, sense, this cohomology theory is refinement by the lifting property of uh, this morphism, or, or, or sorry, of, of this morphism along with this canonical one. But on the other hand, we have, we have the extension property as a counterpart 
for this lifting property in the world of parallel transport category. We have oh. Uh, this uh, part of the square is, is the lifting, is given by the lifting. And uh, the lower part of this commuting square is given by the extension. And this and this morphism are internally related by, uh, by the infinity adjunction. So I have, I have this uh, morphism. Due to this, I can find uh, up to homotopy equivalence, this, this uh, morphism. And regardless, the choice of this, uh, uh, this nabla, this, this uh, um, uh, square commutes. So the, here's the common invariant, which is nothing else than underlying principle bound. Uh, firstly, it gives us some natural choice for, oh, sorry, yes, yes. for this morphism. And uh, once we, uh, once we uh, align uh, uh, this, this uh, abstract approach into the, um, computational and more computational handy handy terms you can find that this morphism is given just by uh just by de degeneracies and face maps from from some internal ones and oh sorry to internal norm zero x Equivalent canonical equivalent to x. So we have the relation between these two spaces and the claim that this square is commute regardless of the choice for now, which gives us which give, gives us uh, the notion of uh, uh, common invariant. And the whole story of Athia sequence is that we can use this invariant for constructing this, but we we will not come for free to, uh, to, to enclose in the subcategory of uh, parallel functors, which are above the specific, specifically chosen principal bundle. We have, to, we have to obey some extra condition. And so it will turn out that this condition is nothing else than the condition for this to be the section. So this be a section. So uh, we can we can uh, pass from this chapter to the last one, where I'll try to briefly sketch how how to work out the relation between between uh, this cohomology theory encoding uh, uh, encoding uh, connections into some kind of uh, section of something that resembles this, but of course is somehow alterated for the pur purposes of uh, higher category theory. So we we uh, get on on the nose how exactly these pieces should look like as to have this uh, morphism uh, as a data for, for uh, differential cohomology theory. And th that's why relay this abstract uh, approach to connections to the approach of Atia. Okay. So, uh, 
I'm going toward the last last uh, part. You have any, any questions? Let's see. Quite fast. Maybe I'm I want all to ask. Uh, so in uh, differential community theory, you just uh, uh, told us about uh, uh, the first uh, cohomology group. What yes, about yes. the others? It's uh, more delicate because uh, uh, we need to, to have uh, some kind of uh, uh, new definition for for, for uh, this uh, this classifying object uh, in a in a uh, abelian category theory. Uh, these objects are deltable. And this uh, 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 means that uh, just this object exists. It's not guaranteed that this object exists okay. in general. And uh, uh, our work in uh, uh, Abelian uh, cohomology theory, I mean, this uh, G uh, comes from Abelian category or, or category uh, Abelian groups or higher Abelian groups. Uh, all the powers of uh, B uh, exist. So the end cohomology, nothing, nothing but but the end power of this lifted, possibly lifted by 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 uh, flat B, right? But it's. Uh, not the direction we can we can uh, go once uh, uh, this uh, don't have to exist doesn't have to exist so it's it's a uh, more delicate and uh, not not so necessary for for, for uh, exploring uh, higher connections. Uh, okay, so uh, may I erase this? Mm. The last uh, piece which we, we, we need is uh, one very handy uh, structure. Uh, Every time present in our uh, topos, and uh, this is uh, uh, orthogonal factorization system structure, which allows us to decompose any morphism into the composition of uh, uh, effective epimorphism and the monomorphism, and the. Uh, because of this gadget, we can uh, we, we can uh, forget on ordinary morphisms and uh, speak uh, uh, speak uh, uh, in the language of uh, effective epimorphisms and monomorphisms, which uh, is quite better job because of their properties. That there is uh, plenty of properties of these morphisms which we can use of, and uh, this is not sure. Uh, so. And the magical phrase is orthogonal factorization system. Uh, in fact, 
there are infinitely many such factorization systems in uh, in a, uh, infinity purpose, but uh, we are interested in the most dumb one, and it's the uh, factorization system of effective epimorphisms and antimorphisms. Okay. Is there any logic behind the term of Um It depends what do you mean by <laughs> logic behind. Uh, yeah. in, in some sense, uh, you can understand it's a good choice of naming. But I'll show you what does it mean. Maybe, maybe. maybe. There's no, there's no metric. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in this sense, no, 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 no. Uh, it's an anti, anti physical, anti physical <laughs> lecture. <laughs> um, so, so far, I said that uh, any or, or observation. Observation says that uh, any morphism in our higher post, as well as in our uh, one category presentation of this higher post. So we can, we can uh, completely switch from, from higher purposes to simply refreshes. Can be decomposed uh, this way. Uh, it's quite common to name uh, this uh, factorization object as an image. And in fact, images and co images coincide in the category which has the property of topos. So it's nothing uh, wrong on naming it co image. And from the very definition of this object, uh, I would rather uh, name it co image. And so maybe you will agree with me after I'll show you what the, what the uh, definition of this one is. Okay. Uh, this construction is uh, unique up to homotopy equivalence. And uh, it uh, comes from the fact that it's, a, it's a universal. It uses universal construction of something like a uh, check nerve. I, And uh, now you can see uh, what's going on. We can, we can uh, form this uh, simplicial object uh, by computing uh, homotopy pullbacks uh, along uh, this S, obtain uh, individual degrees of the simplicial object and uh, uh, connected with uh, uh, morphisms which uh, um, 
uh, which uh, uh, comes from, from this this uh, construction as a universal uh, morphisms. And this is it's called Chetner of uh, morphism F. And because of the universality of collimates, we have we have uh, only one choice of this morphism as to have the discommutative diagram. So we can define uh, monomorphisms like those morphisms connecting these two as to have uh, this diagram commutative. Or we can define it in another way and show that these morphisms should be always monomorphisms. Right. And uh, uh, simil similarly, for epimorph effective epimorphisms, we say uh, F is effective epimorphisms uh, every time this uh, morphism is identity. So once this is this is uh, uh, identity, this is monomorphisms, and one, once this is identity, this is epimorphisms. Oh, sorry, this is epimorphism. I, I uh, lost myself in the explanation, but I think it's, it's clear. But but this uh, uh, construction is inherent is inherently uh, uh, more friendly with uh, taking co-images than images. So I denote it like this. Okay, and uh, there are some uh, there are some nice uh, uh, properties of, of this morphism. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't uh, explained what the orthogonality. So definition orthogonality. Whenever we have uh, this uh, diagram uh, with uh, uh, this morphism being effective morphism and this uh, morphism, there is uniquely up to choice of the representative in the equivalence homotopy equivalence class, one such morphism making these two triangles commutative. This is orthogonality, uh, and yeah. And, uh, some properties which I promised you. So Some, some respectable properties like uh, once we have two effective epimorphisms and uh, this commutes with this composition, then also this, this effective epimorphism. Uh, once we have this, then this morphism is. Uh, sorry, uh, monomorphism. And uh, now more, more demanding or not more surprising. Once uh, we have uh, this, uh, then the second monomorphism uh, is, uh, is an effective epimorphism. This is not uh, really true in general orthogonal system, uh, orthogonal factorization system, but it somehow applies in the effective epi mono factorization in topologies. I found it uh, in, in the Louis book where he just uh, plainly uh, said it comes from uh, some contractibility of mapping spaces, but I'm not uh, at the uh, the level of understanding is proof, so I believe him. This is true. M more, uh, let's say, 
general statement, but uh, also weaker. Uh, sorry, uh, stronger statement, which is not so uh, uh, Sorry, I, uh, this is this is a stronger, but one weaker statement which applies in any uh, orthogonal factorization uh, system says that once uh, uh, we have uh, uh, this and uh, so and this uh, effect. Uh, left orthogonal, then this is also a left orthogonal. I haven't established the, the naming for left and right orthogonal, but uh, in the perspective of uh, any or all uh, orthogonal factorization systems, uh, epimorphism, effective epimorphisms are left orthogonal morphisms and and uh, uh, monomorphisms are right. And the orthogonality may be is uh, most visible, visible in the statement that left and right uh, morphisms intersect exactly in the class of isomorphisms. So they have no other uh, common representative than the isomorphisms are. Okay, so maybe one more interesting property. Uh, all or, or there is essentially a unique uh, effective epimorphism from. Uh, arbitrary A to uh, it's a co image of T, where T is a terminal, is a terminal morphism. This is because there is uh, only one such. Uh, such uh, morphism from co image to, uh, to the terminal object, and the composition uh, is the only one as well. So, whenever we uh, take different co image, uh, this square necessarily commutes. And therefore, there is an equivalent, point of equivalence between these two spaces. And that's why we can, we can write this effective epimorphism and as, as composition of this one. And uh, this is uh, practically identity. So, so these uh, effective epimorphisms are homotopically equivalent. So any two homo, any two epimorphisms from A to co image of, of uh, a terminal morphism are homotopically equivalent. And the last nice property, which follows maybe from from the others, is that we have this G being uh, effective epimorphism, which what uh, doesn't follow from the previous. Statements, but it implies it is implied from the previous statement that this is also uh, this is also uh, effective epimorphism. Effective epimorphism. Okay. So um, we are a bit uh, running out of yeah. I have to be overwhelmed by what I have said. But uh, the most interesting part coming <laughs> right now, because uh, all these uh, statements uh, were somehow known in the literature, and that's the most uh, unexpected part, uh, which uh, might uh, not be free of uh, some gaps, mistakes, and uh, Exactly the, the time 
where you need to be alerted and pay much <laughs> uh, strong attention. Um, how to how to solve this? So, well, I, I would suggest maybe you can continue some sometime. Some, some okay. Uh, there is a little bit of a recap for you it's today. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, maybe it should be a little bit of a Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the main point of my talk is to connect the two words, uh, word of uh, differential homology with a special coefficient, which produces uh, flat uh, connections, and uh, the word of uh, some Lie algebraic sequences, which uh, could be uh, good uh, equipment for encoding the same data. We experienced uh, this relationship in ordinary differential geometry, where uh, principal connections are really encoded in uh, sections of uh, their sequence. So the natural question is whether we are able to generalize this uh, uh, sequence in case uh, of a higher uh, differential geometry and and uh, uh, put uh, the strategy uh, and somehow in a, in a different different setting than another authors uh, uh, and, and other authors do. They start with uh, differential homology and uh, along the lines of uh, uh, higher uh, category theory define what they uh, meant uh, so, uh, higher connections. But uh, we would like to uh, start from quite another uh, part of mass which uh, would be suitably uh, or, or good enough or strong enough for encoding encoding uh, higher connections. And uh, once we succeed, we say, OK, but our starting point is not the differential cohomology theory and uh, uh, this uh, and the playground uh, of uh, uh, coefficients, uh, some differential cohomology refinement and stuff like that. And say, OK, this is just a consequence of what we define as a, as a higher connection. And so uh, the motivation for uh, rewriting uh, the way of thinking is that Atia groupoids are uh, quite uh, better behaved objects than ordinary uh, smooth uh, classifying objects. Smooth class classifying objects are in general infinity stacks. But we can we can form a TIA groupoid out of uh, this one uh, groupoid. It, it's a statement that the, this uh, simplicial object satisfies uh, some nice properties to be to be one groupoid, and say this object is our new atia, and uh, say okay, and uh, because because uh, this is this is uh, one groupoid, we just compute the limit on on one groupoid, and uh, have a have a let's say. A good starting point for computational uh, continuation, because we can we can uh, use we can use uh, uh, we can use the fact that we can uh, run into the subcategory of uh, simplicial manifolds and don't have to bother by 
uh, simply show pressures. We are only uh, interested in simply show manifolds. And the good property of simple show manifolds is that we know how to take a one jet on, of, of simple show manifold. We have a very concrete uh, recipe how to go from a simple show manifold to a, simple show, uh, to, to a lead algebra. And this is the last point that we really, one day, we can really construct this uh, sequence by saying what the analog in a, in a group point, in, in a group point uh, category, or category of, of uh, ATIA group points, or, or, sorry, yeah. category where the ATIA group point is, and take, take, take the one jet to obtain the resulting uh, uh, sequence, what we can call generalized ATIA sequence. So we, we recognize some, some property uh, in, in times very before we uh, have uh, the algebraids in our hands. But uh, one jet has another quite nice properties to uh, preserve, preserve uh, important data to have uh, this as a generalized or, or not this but, but this one jet as a generalized version of, of uh, uh, ATIA. So uh, maybe I will, I will show you uh, three short lemmas with uh, even shorter proofs. Maybe last lemma. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm finishing. I do. <laughs> hard, to, hard to follow all the stuff. Oh, yeah, and that is teaching. You know, three minutes. Yes, yeah. three minutes. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. But you still have some guy outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, so ju ju just uh, uh, the last statement with uh, all the proofs omitted. <laughs> uh, statement says that for any G, there exists the unique morphism which I denoted uh, this way. From this uh, to the space, which I denote like a co -im with a tilde, uh, which satisfies, which moreover satisfies the desired property. It's a section of. Uh, mm, just let me play of some morphism, which we don't have enough time for, for, for construction, for, for constructing. But uh, this, is, this is the identity. And uh, for, for any, for any uh, NABLA, we have exactly one morphism satisfying this. And uh, one jet of this beast will eventually uh, called our generalized ATIA algebra. So this is this is uh, the final part with a proof, but uh, it it uh, heavily uh, uh, uses uh, those uh, properties of factorization systems and the universal property of. Uh, of construction of this of this uh, uh, space. So we have at least uh, uh, at least the correct at least the good uh, notion of the reconstruction uh, going from any connection encoded in the 
manner I discussed uh, maybe one hour ago, and uh, some special groupoid morphism from the parallel transporter to some generalized ATIA. And I claim there is the unique uh, unique solution for this problem. And uh, even, even better uh, is the observation that this one jet, very likely, but I haven't checked it, is the same as as uh, co-image uh, computed directly from G, where G is a classifying morphism for our principal body. So we don't have to know anything about connection. We know only the underlying uh, uh, principal bundle. And this, together with this data, helps us to reconstruct the whole connection as a functor from this group point to this group point. And it's, it's a very likely that this is that this one jet is uh, the same as this one jet. So, and, and this is ordinary higher atia as we, as we know it. It's uh, simply the collimate of, of uh, this check nerve constructed from G. So we have G. That's why we have these morphisms, and we can we can uh, play this game. We can uh, compute uh, uh, homotopic pullbacks and uh, iteratively construct uh, all the degrees of check nerve, and then apply a collimate and uh, use uh, some uh, statements. Uh, concerning the relationship between between collimates on simplicial objects and the classifying functors, well, it's not it's nothing uh, I discussed today, so don't worry if you are a bit lost. But but uh, this is uh, uh, we have checked that this homotopy pullbacks really produces. Uh, in the, the case of one category, uh, the well-known atl algebra. So that's maybe the full stop for my, for my talk. <clears throat> so, Thank you. Only quick questions. Next time we will ask Everything you more is. questions. Thank you. <laughs> However, okay. Uh,